was originally anticipated. We have a, a few councillors in, but uh, most people, like Aucklanders generally, um, have been advised to, to stay at home and, at your case, to be online. So at the very start, I just want to um, quickly hand over to our, our acting CEO, Phil Wilson, and, and Phil is going to give us a, a quick update on the, the situation that uh, occurred in the downtown this morning. Uh, thanks, Chair John. Yeah, so look, we're just, we're obviously uh, acutely aware that people's morning has been disrupted and there's a lot of um, bits of information. Sorry. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, bits and pieces of information that have been coming through um, through the morning. So I'll just I'll just sort of talk briefly to that, and then uh, uh, I know we've got Dean Timpton on the call as well because the the transport aspect of this is um, quite key. So obviously it was a pretty fast evolving situation, and therefore. Um, you know, not fulsome information early that could be communicated or even that was appropriate for us to communicate because the ball was in police's court, uh, clearly, and it's really for them to to um, lead any any comment. Um, for reference, the police have uh, made quite a um, fulsome uh, statement that's in the media uh, now, so, you know, please look to that. In simple terms, um, um, yes, there was a um, shooter situation in the downtown Commercial Bay area. Um, police have contained that seemingly and tragically. Uh, there are a couple of people um, confirmed dead as well as the shooter. So three um, is what we understand. But again, uh, it's not for me to kind of confirm everything. We've got to look to police for the, for the um, uh, detail of this. Um, we did um, have an early um, executive team meeting to decide whether we needed to activate anything from a formal crisis point of view. There was liaison, liaison with emergency management and through them to the police and what have you, um, just to, which was really about establishing, well, how contained is this risk? Um, and, and once the police had the cordon in the downtown area, it was sufficiently contained such that we didn't feel we needed to overreact and tell people not to come into work and so on. We just asked for people to use um, um, uh, caution, stay away from that area. There's been quite a lot of liaison, as you'd expect, with FIFA. Um, you know, I think you were saying, uh, Councillor Chris, you know, it's it's sad that this is the opening day of the tournament and uh, and the focus might be uh, on something like this rather than a celebratory uh, event for the for the city. Um, um, that communication with FIFA has been very good. They have, as you would probably expect, very good liaison with the police. Um, they're very comfortable with the way the situation's uh, being managed. Um, we're with. You know, just to get very practical about it, the cordon is still in place down there, but the risk is um, largely resolved. Clearly, it's a crime scene and uh, will take a little bit of time for um, um, that cordon to be lift and lifted and for things to get back to normal. There are, there are um, events, FIFA-related, um, in the cloud and Shed 10 for later today, and that situation's just being monitored as to whether they'll be able to carry on as planned or whether some adjustment will be made. Um, um, so we're expecting advice from the police in due course this morning about uh, when that court goes and whether things are normalised back, um, back there. I think, John, the, um, the, the rest of it is probably just the um, confirmation of the transport aspect. So we might invite Dean to jump or one of Dean's people to jump on the call. Um, I see you on screen there. Dean, do you, do you want to address this now or wait to your item later later in the day? Perhaps perhaps just give us a, a very brief update on the, the transport aspects as, as they stand. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you, 
John, kia ora everybody. Uh, what I might do is just invite John Strawbridge, who's online, to give you that brief update. He's uh, in the Transport Operations Centre running things, close coordination with the police on all transport related issues. John, you can give a situation update and then when we get to the CEDES report later in the agenda, I can give you a further update if, if, um, if things are changing. Thanks, John. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um through the chair. We've got um, uh, what, what I would say is a, an evolving situation in terms of the public transport um, and network um, operations. Um, ferry services are still disrupted but um, but uh, are operating. Uh, rail services are operating. Bus um, is probably where the significant um, the significant uh, disruptions are in play um, with the team uh, working diligently to um, look at alternate routes and um, get the buses through any um, congestion that's in place. Uh, in terms of our, uh, our people, um, we have our transport officers um, deployed um, and along with our uh, traffic engineering team uh, looking at how we optimise the, um, the area and also assisting the police with the with the cordons. We don't have an ETA of when the cordons will go out, um, but it is a homicide inquiry now. Um, so um, my experience would say that that um, is, will be well into the afternoon and before we get um, those cordons uh, removed from the Key Street area. Uh, yeah, look, in, in terms of um, the uh, the investigation um, that will take some time, but um, we'll work um, along with our providers, the bus and um, ferry and rail providers, to ensure that we get um, services back to a um, optimal level um, given the circumstances. That's probably it, Dean. So th thanks very much, John. Thanks, Dean, and thanks, Phil, for those updates. And uh, members, there will be an opportunity to. Uh, to ask questions and perhaps get more details, uh, Dean, later in the day. I guess just just one um, one announcement for me that that has already been alluded to, and that is really the despite the the tragic events down there this morning, uh, the momentous nature of of today, um, which is the opening of the the Women's World Cup, New Zealand playing Norway at Eden Park, our first of sixty four games. Um, the attendance figure uh, record is set to be broken today uh, at Eden Park. Sellout crowd anticipated of over 40,000. It'll be easily the biggest um, crowd to attend a football match in New Zealand. Uh, in some respects, that that's almost uh, pales by comparison to the, the 2 billion people that are uh, expected to, to watch this World Cup around the world as 32 teams compete. And um, I was listening to the radio on the way out. Christy Hill, a former uh, football fan, said that in some respects that the feeling is that uh, New Zealand and Auckland hasn't quite grasped the significance of the occasion, but I'm sure that will become very apparent uh, this evening at Eden Park. I know a number of councillors will be there along with a whole lot of Aucklanders. So this, this is a, a remarkable tournament. Um, and on a scale that New Zealand has before. So I think it's going to really lift our city and lift, lift our nation. And um, uh, I'm, not, I'm sure the council will be getting right in behind that. So uh, vamos uh, Colombia uh, too, by the way. That's my other team, uh, aside from the football firms. Uh, Duncan's advised me.